Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation is unique in many ways. We're one of the oldest organizations in the country, one of the largest in the country, probably the largest in the state of Texas, and we're unique in what we have here for the animals. Wildlife Rescue has grown and has built an incredible organization that has staff members who are full-time employees. We have anywhere from 15 to 24 interns who come to this organization from around the world to learn and work here and to go forth and carry on the work that they learn here at Wildlife Rescue. Wildlife Rescue has veterinarians who are on staff and who come here to work, protect, care for, and save members of the wildlife community. Everyone from primates to mountain lions to bears to parrots to iguanas, baby possums, squirrels, and veterinarians who come here actually learn how to save those lives. That is a unique opportunity that we give them, and it's a unique opportunity, of course, for the animals in our care. And we do it for as many as five to 7,000 animals every year. Every life matters here. Every baby possum, no matter how tiny he may be, every squirrel, no matter whether he's pink or furred, every little rabbit, every little raccoon, every big green iguana who's been turned out, every one of those animals receives care here by our vet staff and our paid staff and our interns and our volunteers. All of those animals are treated equally and treated with great care and great respect because they all matter equally here at Wildlife Rescue. As you can imagine, a fully equipped clinic like this one is not inexpensive. We have to buy tens of thousands of syringes and cases of gloves, surgical gloves, and cases of medications and formulas for the babies. We have to buy hundreds of thousands of feeding tubes and nipples. They are critical to everything we do. They cost us an incredible amount of money, but they save lives. And that's what makes every donation that comes here so invaluable and so worthwhile. And that is just an incredible gift that we can give these animals. And we do that because we have the contributions that enable us to do that. And that is absolutely critical to every animal here on the sanctuary. We have this incredible, incredible facility now where lives are saved on this very table every day. We would not be here if it were not for the generosity of our members, our donors, the people who care about us and who share and value and treasure the mission of Wildlife Rescue. The mountain lions who live here at Wildlife Rescue are all permanent residents. Even though they are indigenous species, they can't be set free, and they can't be set free because they're victims of the pet trade. It's incredible to think that people can even imagine a mountain lion as a pet, but some people can. One of the mountain lions in particular had an incredible story. He came to us from a flea market in North Texas where he was dying. Somebody came upon him at one of the counters at the flea market. He was full of worms, he was mangy, and he was at death's door. They decided to pay the $25 to get him out of there. They took him to a veterinarian, and the veterinarian contacted Wildlife Rescue and asked us what in the world to do to save this animal's life. We told them the emergency care he needed to be stabilized and to stay alive long enough to come here to the sanctuary. When he arrived here, we didn't have much hope for him. He needed a blood transfusion. He was in terrible condition. We worked on him for days, but little by little, after many, many weeks of intensive care, we were able to save his life. Today, he lives here with these other mountain lions on over four acres. And though they all have a diminished life because they are in captivity, at least they now have a life of hope. Can you imagine living nine years in your bedroom closet? I know I can't. But one of the bears who lives here at Wildlife Rescue now lived nine years in a shipping crate. They had been used by an individual at Renaissance fairs and wrestling bear shows and traveling all around the country for such hideous attractions. And he decided one day to retire them. Only the person who retired them forgot to take them out of their shipping crates. 
They were placed in a windowless barn and there they sat in filth for nine years before anybody did anything to rescue them. There were complaints from the local community. People knew there were animals in the barn and they knew something wasn't right and they knew it had been going on for a long time. So until there was at least a medium-sized public outcry, nobody really did anything. And finally, when everyone knew just how horrible it was, the animals were rescued. We were contacted by a local SPCA, and they knew that they couldn't take the bears in. And they knew they'd need help with them, so they contacted Wildlife Rescue. Two of those bears came to live here at Wildlife Rescue, and they live here now on grass with trees and rocks and sunshine. How they survived that, I'll never know. But their spirit is an indomitable one, and they did survive it, and now their future is safe and secure here at Wildlife Rescue. The rhesus macaques came to Wildlife Rescue when they were about to be killed. They'd been used and abused and exploited by laboratories for all of their 20 plus years. The first day I saw them, I was shocked because their bodies were covered in tattoos. Their cheeks and the insides of their arms and legs, their chests. Every tattoo mark we saw represented another string of experiments. It represented another laboratory that was using them. And it's a horrible thing to think that that is all their life was, a two and a half by two and a half stainless steel cage and fear. Their history is a horrible one. Their sisters and their nieces and their grandmothers and their aunts, and they all knew each other, but they could never be together because their life was spent in little cages in a laboratory. They were old girls and they were gonna be killed. That is a situation that we can remedy here at Wildlife Rescue. It's a situation we remedy every day and every time that we take in animals from laboratories. We rescue those animals and we give them a life here, a life where they are with each other. They can touch and hold one another. They can be together. They have fresh fruits and vegetables. They have sunshine and fresh air. Never again to be used or abused, never again to see the inside of a lab or one of those horrible cages. This is their future now, this is their home, this is their sanctuary, and this must be preserved forever for them and for many more who will come to us. Everyone you've seen in this film, every animal, every person is wildlife rescue. I started the organization in 1977, this is 31 years later. I won't live forever. But wildlife rescue must go on. That is why we've established an endowment fund, because every animal who lives here now, every animal who will ever need us in the future, must have security, must know that wildlife rescue will be here forever. I may not be eternal, but wildlife rescue must be eternal. <laughs>